Hey, hey, good morning. Welcome to the Foundry. It is great to see all of you here this morning. Let me start by saying this. I, back in the day, I became friends with uh, four other guys. So there's five of us to total. Right? We're real close. We call ourselves even the Four Horsemen and Jesse. He's the fifth. He's not a part of the Four <laughs> Horsemen. Uh, my brother-in-law, Tyler, is here today. He is one of the Four Horsemen, one of the original. He married my sister. Totally different story. <laughs> But, but, the, but us together, the five of us together, what we're known for is, is playing practical jokes. Uh, we play practical jokes on each other. Uh, we could spend a whole year planning a practical joke just for like one moment. Uh, or we uh, play practical jokes on other people. And that's usually the case. In one instance, when we were in college, we were uh, thinking that this was a good idea to, to take a paint can and tie a rope to it and fling it out like a third story window and hit the door. And then the RA who didn't like us <laughs> would have to get up and, and check the door in the middle of the night. And so we did that. Uh, we get up there, we're on the third floor and we're throwing the paint can out the, the window and it's, it's swinging down and it's hitting the front door and we pull it up and, and the RA checks and no one's there and we're giggling and laughing like it's the serious men that we were. <laughs> and then probably like the the 12th or the, the 13th time, we threw that paint can out, and it swung. And that kid, that kid opened the door right when that thing hit him, right in the face. Damage, right? Blood, damage, right? It was hilarious. We, we, we thought it was funny, but I learned a lesson that day. And then some, even some of the other uh, practical jokes that we played and still play, uh, even your best laid plans need some contingencies, right? Even, even the best and thought out plan that you have, you still are going to have to do something or make a correction of some sort. It's just the way that it is. And listen, hey, here at the Foundry Church, we are finishing up a series uh, today where we've been talking about how do we grow, right? What is our plan for growth? What, how do we grow in not just uh, in our, our, our relationship with the king that we serve, but in our faith in him? How do we put down some roots? And we said that it boils down to four things, and it boils down to these things. It's, it's being in the word of God, right? It's, it's being with the community of God, like things like today, our, our table groups, even yesterday, where we're, we're serving together and we're having fun together, being with the community of God by the power of the Spirit of God and on the mission of God. And today we get to move to the mission of God. Now, this is the part of any good war movie where they bring everyone together, usually in a tent somewhere, and there's a big map of the battlefield of the country where they're going to be doing this battle. And there's, there's X's and there's lines all over it. And they talk about how they're going to save the world. And listen, I'm a planner by nature. Not just with practical jokes, but with everything. I'm a planner by nature. I have lists everywhere. I have goals everywhere. I have plans. Every year I, I have the staff set goals for the year. I have a uh, as a team, we, we make new goals every 90 days. Even as a married couple, Christina, my wife, and I, we set goals every year, much to Christina's annoyance, I might add. We have goals. So this part, this uh, part of this series where we talk about the mission of God, it's my jam. It's my jam, right? It's my song. It's my PB to my J. This is the part where we get to huddle up as a, as a church, as a community of believers, whether we've been here for uh, years, this is our thousandth time through the front doors, or if this is our first time through the front doors, or if we're tuning in online for the very first time, this is where we realize that God, the God that we're forging our life on, the God that you can forge your life on if you haven't yet, has a purpose for you. He has a plan for you. Right? A, a unique identity for you, a, a thing for you to step into that is bigger than yourself. And it makes a difference in this world. Right? So this is the part where we huddle up as a church and say now that we've been in the word of God, that we're, we've made that commitment to anchor ourselves to that truth, that we're meeting with the community of God, that we've, we're committed to that. 
and that we can only do this by the power of the Spirit of God, what are we going to do about it? Right? Uh, what's the point of all of that? What's the point of this gathering together? Well, today, we're going to focus just on two verses. So if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Matthew, and we're going to see the point. Now, listen, if you don't have your Bibles with you, or if you don't have a Bible, you can use the Bibles that are in the seats in front of you, and you can take those with you. They are free for you to have, to use, uh, to keep, to give away. Take those Bibles. Don't worry, we have plenty more. And we're going to be in the book of Matthew, which is in the New Testament. So the Bible is broken up into two parts. The old part and the new part. And the new part is the second half of the Bible. Matthew's the very first book of the Bible, of the New Testament. So turn there, use the table of contents if you have to. But we're going to be in Matthew 28, so the end of that first book of the New Testament. Now, Matthew is a great book. right? Jesus has, had lived his his, his full life on earth. He, he has died on the cross. He has risen again. He spent 40 days uh, with his followers, and now he's getting ready to go back and, and to stand at the right hand of God until he returns again. That's part of the, the gospel. And, and these two verses that we're going to look at today, that we're going to read today, they, they are left with Jesus' closest disciples at that time. And in turn, us here today. And so let's read it together. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. It simply says this. And Jesus came to them, and he said this. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I lied. We're going to do three verses. <laughs> Verse 20 says, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, he says, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, these, these three verses are the final locker room pep talk that Jesus gives the disciples before they go out into this game of life, before they step into abundant life, life to the full, as Jesus said he has come to give them. This is what people call the Great Commission. And if you got your pencil, you got a pen, you got a highlighter, highlight this. All right, this is our commission. All right, this is what we're supposed to do. This is really the greatest commission ever given. These, these few sentences, after the, the greatest sacrifice... Right, the, the greatest miracle to ever occur, right, where we're going to celebrate next Sunday, on Easter Sunday, changed the world. And then Jesus comes back and he gives these verses. And these are the few verses that will help us, Foundry. That they're going to help us after accepting the greatest sacrifice ever made, right, accepting that Jesus went to the cross for us, like we're, again, we're going to celebrate next Sunday. When we accept that, these verses will help us grow in our faith, and not just that, change the world. All right, so let's break them down. I want to focus on one word in these sentences, just one word. And so if you're writing in your Bible, I want you to circle every time you see the word in those three verses, all. The word all. Just, all right, we're going to go through them. All right, by the way, if you're, if you're not writing in your Bible, or if you're not taking notes, what are you doing? All right? <laughs> Do it, right? Study after study has shown that writing down what you hear helps you remember and apply it later, right? Church is not just an hour on Sunday. We got to live this out. So take notes, right? When you were when you're in college and your teacher said you could have a cheat sheet, right? But it had to be like just one sheet of paper and you crammed everything in there and you wrote it over and over again to try to get it to fit, right? It, they, were, they were tricking you. <laughs> Because you get to the exam, you don't, you don't, need, to, you don't need that cheat sheet because you've written it over and over again. You know what it says, right? That your teacher tricked you into learning. Now, I'm not trying to trick you. I'm just being honest. I want you to learn what we talk about today. So write notes. And there are foundry uh, moleskin notebooks back there at the, at the bookshelves at the info center. Grab one of those on your way out. They're free. Write notes. But back to our verse. What is the first all? All authority. Right, all authority, right there at the very beginning. Now, this is important because it answers this question. Right? Why should we listen 
to Jesus in these verses. Right? <laughs> when you were a kid and your parents left you alone with your siblings to stay at home, and you were all alone with your siblings, do you remember that moment when your one sibling, maybe a sister, <laughs> right, started bossing you around and, and making you do things, making you do things that you didn't want to do? And so what did you say? What did you say when that happened? You probably said, who put you in charge? <laughs> right? Who put you in charge? I'm bigger. All right? Jesus is heading this off the pass. He says, God put me in charge. God the Father put me in charge. All authority in heaven and on earth is mine because I am, I am. <laughs> The great I am, right? This is the same authority, the same language that is used when explaining the power an officer in the military would have over a private in the military. It's the same language. It's the same word in the original uh, Greek. So, so Jesus is saying he has authority. Right? Jesus is saying he has uh, the power he has authority over politics and government. He has authority over uh, armies and military. He has uh, authority over all industry and business, uh, your money. He has authority over, and that includes the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones, whatever those are. He has authority over science and education. Every discovery of science, every lesson learned in a laboratory, every cure for a disease. He's saying, I have authority over all entertainment and media. I have authority over all. Right? You may not believe it, uh, but uh, he has authority over every radio, TV, magazine, newspapers, internet, theater, art, whatever. Right? Jesus, our king, the God that we are forging our life on, Foundry Church, has the authority. Now, he has the authority over all sports, and I think... Uh, this year's March Madness, uh, we can all kind of can kind of see that like someone else has to be controlling this mess with with San Diego State right, doing their thing. Right, who would have thought? He's saying I have authority over all natural phenomena, weather, floods, rain before egg hunts, right? Volcanoes, earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, and global warming and ozone layers. He has authority over all planets, moons, and stars, Foundry Church, and light, energy, all motion, and time. He's saying he has authority over our lives, all authority, end of the discussion, right? He has health and disease, success, failure, life, and death. He's saying he has authority. He has authority over what the mission of our life should be. He has the authority, right? And then don't miss this. Right? He has the authority to empower us to complete that mission. Right? He's saying, I have all authority over everything. I have all authority. I have the authority to empower us to complete that mission, he says. Right, Foundry Church, I want you to lean in. Right? I, I, want you to, I want you to get this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve this up like Tom Cruise playing beach volleyball. <laughs> Right? Everyone here, if you're watching online, get this, right? He says, if all authority under heaven and on earth has been given to me, to Jesus, right? He, I bet he knows for good or for bad who he's sending on this mission. Right? He, he has all authority. So, so whatever you think of yourself, good or bad, whatever you think your abilities are, good or bad, he knows. Right? And he sends us anyways, right? Because he has authority to empower us, to empower you. He, he has a purpose, a purpose that is bigger than all of us. You were created to be someone who makes a difference because you were created by a king who has all authority. Now, I love how Charles Spurgeon, the great preacher from London, explains this. Uh, he says, who's out, right? Who, who's to go out in that first band of disciples, Right? It's Peter, the rash and the headstrong. He says it's, it's John who sometimes wishes to call fire from heaven and destroy men. He says it's Philip with whom the Savior has been so long and yet he has not known him. It's Thomas who must put his finger into the print of the nails or he will not believe him. And then he says, yet the master, our king, says to them, go. He says, all power is given unto me. I don't care your 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 like you, what doubts you have. I don't care what you you you, you think you are, are 
are holding you back. He says, therefore, go, because I have the power. I have the authority. He says this. He says, he says, you are as good for my purpose as anybody else would be. Right? There is power in you, Spurgeon says. I know, but, but then all power is in me. Therefore, go ye. Right? I don't know about you, but that's kind of freeing to me. To think about that, right? There, there's no power in me. And I know we're all type A people. We're all go-getters in, the, in this northern Virginia area. But there's no power like the power of our God. And he says, go in that. Go. Founder Church, it is his authority that sends us. His authority that guides us, right? All authority. It is his authority that commands us, and it's his authority that empowers us to do what? To go. And where are we supposed to go? Well, that's the next all you should circle, right? What does it say? All nations. Everywhere. Right? In all places, in your home, in your school, in your office, at the barber shop that you go to, at the bus stop, to all people, to your family, to your neighbor, no matter how much they drive you crazy, to your friends. Right? Let's face it, if we can really, can we really call someone a friend if we aren't willing to tell them about something that can save their life? He says, go to the poor and to the needy. You want to make a difference in this world. If you forge your life on God, he's going to send you to the famous, to the homeless, to the person that you get along with, to the person that you can't stand. He's going to send you because he says, I have authority. And he says, go to the person who speaks a different language than you, who looks different than you. There are no exceptions, no disclaimers or buts. He says, go to all nations. You have a purpose. You have a purpose. You can make a difference. He says there is no place on earth where the gospel of Jesus should not be preached and where disciples should not be made. And if you don't follow God, right? if God is, if you're just trying to figure out who he is, right? this is what you can be a part of. This is the adventure that you were created to live and to be a part of, a purpose that is bigger than yourselves, Right? And he says, go into every nook and cranny of the earth. And what are we supposed to do when we go? We're supposed to make disciples. And it says, by baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. All that I've commanded you. Right? That's the next wall, right? All that I have commanded you. You see, Jesus did not say make converts of all nations. He did not say fill up your church uh, chairs, your pews with nations. He did not say build up a new country and a new government with, with nations. Right? He didn't say win an argument with the nations. He said make disciples of all nations. And the difference between a convert and a disciple is in the observing of all that Jesus has commanded. It is forged men. It's forged women. It's forged students and kids who are saying, I am going to guide others to forge a lifelong reliance on God. Our responsibility is not just to inform the nations of what Jesus commanded. It is to speak in such a way. It is to teach in such a way. It is to pray in such a way that people actually do what Jesus commanded because they see that Jesus loves them and is the best for them. That there is a life created for them. Right? He came to give us all life to the full, life abundantly, he says. And don't let me kid you, it is not the easiest life. Don't let me kid you, it's not, right? But it is a life of power. It's a life that when the chaos of this world is swarming around us, we know that it's not peace that we want from the absence of that chaos. It's the presence of our king that gets us through. It's a life of power, right? Jesus is for us and he guides us. Around here, we would say it is our responsibility, like I said, to guide people to forge a lifelong reliance on God for all of us to be forged men, women, students, and kids. It's a deep calling. It's a harder calling. It's one, though, that changes people, and one might say it brings life back to us and to them. 
Right? When we teach people to observe the commands of Jesus, we're teaching them to love like no one else has ever loved before. We're, we're learning and we're forging ourselves on a God who's going to be teaching us to serve and ask for nothing in return because that's what he does. Right? When we're, we're, we're teaching and we're learning that we need to forgive our enemies and pray for those who persecute us, when we are forging our life on God, when we go to all nations and he's with us because he has the authority, we are learning that, that we can live sufficiently so that we can give extravagantly to this community. Right? We're, we're learning that we can, we can teach each other to, to fight against injustice and for those who cannot fight for themselves. And we can be an example of Jesus' grace, love, truth, peace, and joy. Hey, we, we're, we are teaching each other and we are learning when we, we understand that he has all of authority and he sends us, he says, go to all nations. We're teaching each other that we can move mountains with faith as small as a mustard seed. Guys, this is life changing stuff. It's big stuff. It's powerful stuff. It is real stuff. And for some of us, I get it. It seems like it might just be outside of our reach or our ability. Sure, Jesus has the authority to tell me to go, but it, but it certainly seems a little overwhelming when we get there. <laughs> Like, for me, for real, right? And that's the greatest part of this verse. That's the greatest part of this verse, because the next all says this. It says, all the days. Now, I might have tricked you, because your translation may say, I will be with you all the days, or it might say, always. But they mean the same thing. Right, Jesus, with all the authority under heaven and that earth, has sent us on a mission. He says, go, but guess what? He's packing his bags with us. He's going with us. He's not only commissioning us, he's coming along for the adventure. One commentator put it like this. He says, the English adverb always renders an expression found in the New Testament only here. Strictly, the whole of every day. <laughs> not just the horizon is in view, but each day as we live it out. Think about that. Like I said, I'm a planner. I, I make goals. I, I have dreams. I'm always living 10 years in the future, right? It's easy for me to see Jesus there, but I struggle. I struggle, I'm just being honest, with seeing Jesus right here on Monday after church, right? But the word always here, in, when it's used in the original language, means always, the whole of every day. He's with us. Jesus is going to be with us during the whole of every hour, of every minute, of every day. Man, the God we forge our life on. The impossible mission does not seem impossible when we do not separate it from Jesus. And I think this is why being on the mission of God helps us grow in our faith so much. Right? We're talking about being people of the word of God with the, the community of God the last few weeks, powered by the, the spirit of God. But I think this is where we really take ground when we understand that we're doing all that to be on the mission of God. And I think this is why it grows our faith so much. There's only one way to complete this great commission, to go and make disciples, and that's this. We cannot separate the commission of God from God. Right? You need help obeying the command from uh, the authority of God. Do not separate the commission of God from God. Right? His authority is found in what he did. He, he died for sinners. He conquered death. He conquered Satan. He conquered sin. He was perfect. He poured out his spirit. He has the authority, so we must obey. Having trouble, though, seeing every nation... Or really just that horrible person in your neighborhood or you have trouble seeing them and, and, and seeing that they need to hear the good news. Do not separate the commission of God from God. He can step into that. As it says in Acts, God made the whole world and every inhabitant in it. And as it says in the book of John, in the gospel of John, God loved the world so much that what did he do? We're going to celebrate it next Sunday. He sent his son to die for us. And as it says in Galatians, for as many as you were baptized into Christ 
have put on Christ, there is neither now nor neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male or female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. He makes us all one. So go into every nation, talk to every person, show love to all those that we come in contact with. Or, or if we're having trouble with the idea of teaching all the teachings of God, where it says teach these things, and we're like, oh, there's some really tough teachings in there. <laughs> well, I think, I, I think you know where I'm going to go with this. We cannot separate the commission of God from God. Right? The, the commands of the Lord are hard sometimes. <laughs> they just are. They're tricky, especially in a world that doesn't always agree with the God that we forge our life on. But if we, are, if we do not take God away from his words, if we, if we let God lead us in, in their time with his word, what it says in Psalms is true, where it says the law of the Lord is perfect. It will revive the soul. Where it says the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Where it says the, the precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Right, when you know the rule giver, then his teachings and his commands aren't so harsh. They're wisdom, wisdom in the hands of a loving God. If we do not separate the great commission from the great God that we forge our life on, then we can do nothing but grow in our faith. Right, because with Jesus always following his commands will naturally lead to us reaching out to others but it will also deepen our faith in our lives. It gives us a purpose, a direction, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to invite the band to come back up here. And, and I, I know that so many of us, we're, we're wandering around in life. And we're just going from, from bed to the car to work, maybe back home, and then and then back to bed to start the process all over again, thinking, man, what's the point of all this? What's the point of all this? Why do I need to, to keep doing this? Am I making a difference? How do I make a difference? Whatever it might be, right? Maybe, maybe you're even thinking, what, what's the point of this, right? Why do I need to keep doing this? Right, this is what we've been looking for. Are you looking for something that has meaning? Something that will last, something that will change this world? This is it. This is your commission. Right? Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always, always to the end of the age. That is our calling, Foundry Church, to change the world to guide people to forge a lifelong reliance on God so all of us can step into a life that is, is created for us as individuals, life to the full, abundant life, not the easiest of life, like I said, but a life of purpose, of meaning, a life that makes a difference. This is your calling to change the world. Don't let it go in one ear and out the other. Maybe to change the world, you need to start in yourself, and, and you have some questions about Jesus and all his teachings, well, I would love to talk to you. Or better yet, I bet the person sitting next to you, they would love to talk to you and step up to the table with you. Dig into God's word as the community of God, empowered by the spirit of God, so that you guys can step onto the mission of God. Right, maybe to change the world, you need to start in your home, your kids or your spouse or your mom, they aren't baptized, they don't know Jesus, they haven't they haven't heard the gospel and they need to get it from the gospel up here in their head just knowing what Jesus has done and they need to get it down here in their heart and you can help them do that. Right? You, can, you can invite them to church. You can invite them just to have coffee with you and, and read one of the gospels together. Maybe to change the world you need to get closer to Jesus yourself. He, he has promised to be with you always but you're ignoring him. And you're doing your own thing. You're forging your life on the million and one things that this world has to offer. And they might be good things, but they're not God. 
So he wants back in on the mission with you. And all you got to do is you just say, Lord, forgive me. I forged my life on something other than you this week. It's me. I've done that. You say, Lord, I'm stepping back into your mission. Come with me. I know you promised to be with me. Let's do this by your power. Everyone in this place, everyone watching online, we have one step to take this week, one step to follow this command of Jesus, one step to forge a lifelong reliance on God, one step to change the world. As we head into Holy Week, as we head into remembering what Jesus, our King, what our Lord has done for each and every one of us, we can take a step closer. We can take a step deeper into being forged, focused on God's kingdom, not on this world. Owning our spiritual growth, because I can't do it for you. Your spouse can't do it for you. Your parents can't do it for you. You got to own it. All right, but God's with you. Then maybe it's maybe it's responsible, realizing you're responsible for inviting others into the kingdom of God. So you just got to make the ask. All right, eighty-three percent of your friends will come to church if you ask them on Easter Sunday. It's pretty good odds. It's pretty good odds. Right? And you think, oh, maybe they're not ready for church. Buy them a little coffee. You ain't got to be weird. Right? One of our family values is, hey, what is it? You can be different, but you can't be weird. <laughs> so for our nieces. Just be you. Be authentic. Say, hey, Jesus has done this for me. He can do this for you. So I want you to know I'm praying for you. As long as a conversation you need for the Spirit of God to take over and come upon your friend like an itchy sweater. It's pretty cool. So we're realizing that we're responsible for inviting others, right? We're, we're growing as leaders that are worth following because we all have a sphere of influence. That we could, we could speak into, we can help people, we can guide people. We, we, we got to realize that we're, we're doing that, right? And then we embrace Christian community like we talked about last week. We step up to the table together. We're in this together. We're soldiers in, in this fight together, shoulder to shoulder, because we're all image bearers of God, whether we believe in him yet or not. You're a child of his. And then we seek to serve. We seek to serve. He is full of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, fun, like yesterday. All these things that our world is starving for, that's so hungry for. God says, I'll go with you. Step into it. People are going to experience that love and all those fruit of the Spirit. You're going to experience it more. How great is that? You know, there's this old English proverb that goes like this. It says, for want of nail, the shoe was lost. For want of the shoe, the horse was lost. For want of the horse, the rider was lost. For want of the rider, the battle was was lost for want of the battle the kingdom was lost i think sometimes we think that this great commission it's just a little nail we think what's the big deal if i i i forged my life on god i give my life to god but but someone else can handle the great commission well for want for nail the kingdom could be lost all of our commission. Every one of you has been called by God to reach the people in your sphere of influence. And I, I don't know your neighbors. I, I don't know your coworkers. I don't know your kids. Heck, I, I don't know what goes behind closed doors at your home. But what I do know is that in all of those relationships, Jesus is with you and he has given you a purpose and he is famous for making big things happen. Don't, don't be the missing nail. 
Be the one who steps up and changes everything by the power of our God. You're a forged man. You're a forged woman. You're a forged student. And you're raising some forged kids downstairs. You can make a difference. You're in the word of God. You're with the people of God. You got support. You're empowered by the spirit of God. And you're on the mission of God. Man, what a world this would be. How many of our neighbors would come to know Christ? How many of our, our, our family members who live across the hallway would come to know Christ? That's what we want for you. All right, let's stand together. Let's worship. Let's dedicate ourselves to these things. The word of God, the people of God, the community, the spirit of God, and the mission of God. Let's continue to worship him and give him praise and honor.